All right, what's going on, everybody? I'm Ham Radio Dude, and it is Wednesday night live. Um, you can see I got the IC705 here, and it doesn't have its POV protective case on there. That's because today we're going to uh, assemble the Ham Gear 3D IC705 uh, protective frame. It was sent in to me by the owner of Ham Gear 3D, Michael. And instead of just building it, I figured we would do a live stream where I build it and see how easy it is to build, talk about it a little bit, but also kind of just uh, shoot the breeze while we're doing so. So we'll get started here by seeing uh, how's everybody doing today? Who's all in the chat? I see Todd. What's going on, Todd? How you doing? And Adam, how's it going? Uh, let's see. We've got a couple other people I saw already here. The Unlucky Ham. We got Joe Brett. I saw Ape. I saw T.O. I saw Chuck. I saw Mike AMRD. Thanks for being here. Um, Andy Colley, of course. He was first. I saw that today. Arthur, what's going on? W6HER. Welcome. Oh, I see Megs. What's up, Megs? How's it going? Chris Dehan. And, uh, oh, I missed it. Uh oh, they just went really quick. Living in X. Not loving in X, like I might have said last night. Uh, VK Ham Radio. What's going on? And Sean, AI7EQ. That's a good name right there. I like that name. Uh, Mike Miles and Ron, what's going on? Max. So guys, I hope you're all doing well. I spend the weekend celebrating my birthday, which is, uh, oh, I saw K0BKO, which I missed. Brian, how's it going, buddy? And Adrian, how's it going? Uh, Max, I also saw him. I mean, they're still rolling in. This is awesome. Cool. Anyway, I spend the weekend celebrating my birthday, which was nice. It was relaxing. And I got some donuts, so that's really important. But today we're here to build this case. Uh, I want to talk about it a little bit. Guys, feel free to ask any questions. And thank you, Striker. I appreciate that. Ask any questions that you might in the chat about this case. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, and we'll talk about it along the way as well. So first of all, let's get started with what is this case. And it'll be just a second here as I switch screens. This is the uh, POV case. That's kind of a, a large photo. But it protects your, or it's actually uh, a POV uh, mount, if you will. And it, it's supposed to protect your protective cage. It's supposed to protect your IC705 in case you drop it. But uh, this has a couple of unique features that something like the POV doesn't have. Um, so again, this is Ham Gear 3D. There's a link uh, in the chat. I'll go ahead and pin it here in just a moment if I haven't already. And as you can see, it has the side handles uh, similar to like a POV. Uh, and it also has something a little more unique. Now, there's a spot on here that has a carrying handle, but there is a spot here where there's a screen protector. Let's see if we can find that. And it is 3D printed, as you can see. Now, they use PLA+. Plus. PLA+, Plus is a little bit more durable than uh, normal PLA+. Uh, still, you don't want to use PLA plus in environments more than 140 degrees. And even then, kind of like I was talking to Michael, if you're using your IC705 in more than 140 degrees, you might have some other issues. And there it is, the protective cover on the front. So the front or cover here that covers the screen, it actually comes in two different styles. One's a flip screen, so you can flip it up or down. And the other one's a snap on or snap off case or cover rather. So there we go. That's what we're going to build today. Give me just a moment here. We have the instructions, but before we do that, let me go ahead and pull up. Uh oh. Let me go ahead and pull up this part here, and let's just go through some of the parts that we have. Uh, the first thing that I get, and I can't see the chat at the moment, so I'll, I'll check it periodically, but the first thing I get is a a little bit of a, uh, a bill or a, a sheet with all the parts that are included. So the frame, two side rails, the handle and bottom bracket for the tripod, two backstays and two handle brackets, a bag of hardware, including the info cards, flip up cover screen with a custom call sign W9FFF. And here's your nuts and bolts. So with this project, you do need uh, Allen wrenches as well as, uh, as well as a small wrench in order to, to, to secure some things, but we'll get into that in just a moment. Other than that, we got to unbox all this stuff here. While I do that, let me jump onto the screen and see if there's anything going on in the chat that I need to be aware of. Hmm, let's see. Does anyone know how to change your name on YouTube? It always tells me I can't. Uh, well, I don't know exactly where you got to go, but 
I will tell you, I think you're only allowed to change it once every 30 days. So if you've changed it within the last 30 days, it probably won't allow you to do it for another 30 days. And Gaming Hand, thank you. Appreciate it. Welcome. So everything was nice and bubble wrapped individually. Now, one thing I already noticed about all this is when I 3D print stuff, I'm pretty bad uh, designer. But uh, you can see these little, I don't know if you want to call them inlets or essentially where the screws can, can grab. Now, when I 3D print and design stuff, I just make it so the screws fit in there. So that's kind of cool. Uh, he did print this with 50% infill. So it'll be a little bit more durable. If you guys saw my Texas video, I 3D printed an IC705 case and I smacked it once or I turned it and it broke. But I think that I was only printing at 25% infill. So that might be the difference. Plus I was printing a PLA and this is PLA too. So let's just go ahead and set that to the side. And maybe open some of the thing. We'll just set this one to the side for a minute. I'm gonna I'm gonna need a knife. Uh oh, my knife is dull too. I think you guys could attest to that. This is that protective cover I was talking about. And there it is, W9FFF. So as you can see, I used a really fine material or a, a really fine setting to print. Um, you do see some layers, but it's not bad at all. And then there you go. It is well packaged for sure. All right, this is not going to be a knife. I know, I know. And of course, the stream will be about an hour long, and then it'll lead right into Ham Nation on Ham Radio Crash Course's channel. So there's your side handles. So one of the advantages of this over like the POV case, and I'm not, I'm going to have to test all this out to see how well I like it once we get it all together. And, th and there'll be some testing. I'll have to take that out in the field and all that stuff. But one of the advantages is this only weighs about a half of a pound. Uh, so as I was talking in the last screen stream with Chuck, KK6USY, uh, I, I was having some problems with the, the IC705 with the POV cage because it was a little heavy for me. And this might rectify that issue. We'll, we'll see what happens. Let's see what else we got going on. I made my first D Star contact today. Uh, Chuck, how's you and the family? Well, congratulations on that first D Star contact in Gaming Ham. I also saw that you have All Star, I believe. So, tomorrow, just so everybody knows while I'm trying to kill dead air, tomorrow morning, the Shegu X6100 goes on sale at Radiotity. Now, it's already been on pre-sale at uh, Ham Radio Outlet. Who's going to deliver first uh, is anybody's guess. Uh, actually, uh, Radiotity hasn't been returning my emails, so I don't know. Uh, it's uh, anybody's guess. But the rumor was is sometime around mid-November is when they're first going to start to ship. Hey, how's it going, Rhea? Thanks for being here. Well, that was really good packing packaging and that's about everything so we got the bolts we got the frame we got the side rails we got the handle and the bottom bracket and then we got these here which i think are for the i don't know we're gonna find out here i got the instructions here let me give you guys a link if you want to follow along there you go All right, so we need a set of metrics hex keys and a small adjustable wrench for lock nuts. No problem. I got that already. I pre-game that part just to not have to run downstairs and be like, well, I got to look through all my tools to find something. <laughs> and behind my big head, all I'm doing is just laying out all these nuts and uh, bolts. 
So it says assembled the side rails onto the frame using four M4 by 10 millimeter socket head screws. The inside of the edge of the side rail should line up with the inside edge of the frame. Tighten these screws securely. Hmm. It just tells me, well, the picture's like that, but that's not going to fit that way. So it's got to be that way. Okay, cool. So just like that. And what I'm going to assume is the M4 by 10 millimeters right there. And I want to make sure that this is on the front. So. Hmm. Stand by. I got to look through all these pictures here real quick. Now there is a 15, no, a 14 degree, uh, like rake, if you will. So it, it is able to kind of, it's going to be able to, to point up at you. So with that being said, uh, if it went this way, it would look kind of weird. I think it's got to go this way. And that, that 14 degree rake is so it can just kind of like rest on its own. Um, kind of like the POV case does. Frankie Maple told me to wait a while before buying the 6100. Some production issues. Oh, I can't wait to see what production issues I get. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see. Oh, I do know that the... Um, and I'm not I'm not oblivious to it either. The the 5105 had a lot of issues, but they've they updated them in firmware, I believe. So I, I guess we'll see what kind of production issues they have. Now let's see. It says to to tighten it up. It's kind of looking like a case, right? Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's done, guys. Perfect. Now, I'll say that the handles, uh, you, I can fit feet, three fingers in here, you know. Okay, uh, let's see. The POV, excuse me, is similar in size, probably a tad bit bigger. Eh, about the same. And the only reason I'm comparing it to the POV is that's the only other mount uh, I have at the moment or uh, protective frame I have at the moment. Let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, Jim is Joe zones and bad. Jim tried to kill my spectrum analyzer. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So far, I'm uh, taking myself. Out. Jim has a 5105. It's a good radio. A 5105 is. It's. Uh, I'm curious to see what upgrades they have. So so far, everything lines up without issue. Um, I did put this one in a little crooked, if you could tell. So I'm just loosening it up here to move this one over. They should let YouTuber creators beta test it before a full production release. I've been saying that about a lot of companies that. Actually, I think I said that on my my ham radio was dying video. Uh, it doesn't even have to be YouTubers per se. It it, um, it could be just some really knowledgeable people in the field, like uh, Dave Kassler, for example, very knowledgeable individual, right? Uh, why not throw him one? He's he's uh, top notch, and he would be able to tell you that this is wrong, that's wrong, this wrong. Maybe some people would or wouldn't like these features, and see see what has to happen. Looking forward to seeing who gets the preview units on the 6100. Uh, really interested in it. It's my first HF rig, even though it's not 100 watts. It um, should be pretty interesting. Let's go to step two here real quick. It says attach the handle brackets. That's what those L-shaped things were, the handle brackets. Attach the handle brackets to the top of the frame using two M4 by 12 screws. Urgh. I think it's these two right here. So you have two different ones. I know they came in four, but you have two different ones. So it's going to be these two right here. 
and they're going to actually face, there's a fat side and a skinny side. The skinny side is going to go down and hmm. All right, I'll go for it. We'll see what happens here. Hey, if, if I make a mistake, it's uh, not the end of the world. The first mistake is where did I just put that Ellen Ridge? Uh oh, I need a smaller wrench. <laughs> Jim says, my spectrum analyzer was never in danger. And I agree, Jim. And uh, we're talking about this cell wave dummy load is what Jim and I are kind of referencing back and forth. And uh, no, that one's too small. Don't worry. I have another plan. I have this trusty iFixit kit, not a sponsor. But uh, that, that cell wave device, there was some, some talks whether or not it was actually an attenuator. And uh, turns out in the end, it's 50 dB of attenuation. And let's see, Ham Radio, dude, you should have a package delivered to you on Friday. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. I appreciate it, Mike. Uh-oh. Does Ham Radio do not have that bit? Uh-oh. No, it's in my screwdriver. Ha! Huh. And it says here, uh, the instructions say uh, when you attach these, these top handles, uh, the flat side of the bracket should face the, the side of the frame, which it does. And then note that one side of the bracket is smoother than the other. The smooth side should face the operator. So I have done that wrong or incorrectly. So what I'll do is I'm going to turn this around, but then I'm just going to bring it over here. And what they're talking about is there's a rough side, as you can see here. That's the side that was probably printed on the bottom. And then there's a smooth side, which was printed on the top. Hey, this is my first rodeo, so next time I install it, I'll be like, it's my second rodeo. It's kind of funny how people say that. It's not my first rodeo. It doesn't make you experienced. Yeah, the first time I did a rodeo, I got bucked off. But it ain't my first rodeo. Random thoughts by the dude. Adrian says that uh, Jock's Josh, excuse me, over at Hammer Yoda Crash Course, ought to receive a preview model, especially as he's just about the only guy who can pronounce Shegu properly. Uh, I, Adrian, I'd love to know how to pronounce it. I used to pronounce it Zygu, but uh, then I was corrected. So uh, please let me know how to say it. Uh, I'll pronounce it correctly. It's like the Baofeng thing, though. Everybody, everybody used to tell me say, Bofeng, and then I would say Bofeng, and people would be like, it's Baofeng. I'm like, I don't know anymore. All right, assemble the screen cover handle by inserting the M5 and M45 millimeter screws from the handle into the screen cover. Don't push the screws in all the way yet. And they were referring to these, and I'm a little concerned because, you know, everything else is in pairs. And I have three of these, so I'm wondering if there's supposed to be a fourth one, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. So on this part, there's two sides. There's this side here that has a protruding uh, part of the handle and the other side that has a protruding part of the handle. They both look equally as smooth. This one probably doesn't have an orientation. And yeah, I did it wrong still. I got to look at the pictures. Hold on here. Oh, but I said Shegu and Zygu, so I don't know which one was right. Uh, Shegu one, Zygu two. <laughs> uh, all right. So what did I do here? Okay, there's my problem. The screen cover is going to go on next. I didn't do anything wrong. I was just looking at the wrong part. 
So what they say is I'm going to put the screen cover and handle in by inserting the screw. So first the screen cover goes on and then the handle. All right, cool. Dude needs apes help. Yeah, I figured I'd try to do some streams on my own these days. He'd be like, son, just grab yourself a Miller Lite and get to work. <laughs> there we go. So it says don't uh, put these all the way through yet, which is kind of a difficult task, to be honest with you. But pronounced the Zygu. Okay, well, then I was right originally. So whoever told me it was Shagu, Todd says it's <laughs> Zygu. Smoking Ape says it's Shagu. Oh, man, this is going to be a Holy Wars thing, ain't it? All right, now place the handle and cover assembly inside the brackets you mounted onto the frame in step two. Line up the hole in the bracket with the M5 screw and push the screw all the way through so it protrudes through the bracket on both sides. I think I could follow that instruction pretty simple here. Just kidding. There you go. And do the same thing here. So I'm not trying to force anything, but it's not quite lined up. And so what I'm just trying to do is make sure I get it lined up before I, I try to push it through. Uh, because if you try now, it's just going to do nothing, you see. Yeah, I'll be curious to actually see the Shegu side by side with the 705 and see what comes of that. There we go. All right, it's lined up. I just. I wonder if I could just kind of screw it and see if it eventually comes. There we go. That'll work. For some reason, this side wasn't pushing like the other side would. So I'm just kind of turning it and it seems to be doing the job here. And Todd told me to take a break and smash that like button. I think he's right. And if you guys like this kind of thing, let me know, because uh, trying to get a format going for Wednesdays, uh, and I'm completely cool with anything goes, uh, so every stream could be different. It doesn't have to be a build all the time or an assembly all the time. Uh, I could even unbox and, you know, uh, overview radios or whatever you want to do. Uh, I can go back to the old FT8 and chill stream, uh, you know, where we just do FT8 and BS. Anyway, there you go. So let's see what the next step is. Now thread a nylon insert nut into the protruding screw on each side and tighten each while holding the hex key, while holding the nut with an adjustable wrench or socket. The degree of tightness will affect the ease of motion of the handle and the screen cover. The nut should be tight enough that the handle and the cover will hold the position you leave them in. I got this one. <laughs> floor mate for Wednesday. Do I do I need a floor mate? You know, I do I do enjoy having somebody else on the stream. Uh it feels kind of weird not having anybody on the stream. Like last week I had Chuck, right? Um I could. 
Ryan, thank you for the ten dollar super chat. Ryan, I'm going to have on the show at one point too. I'd buy yourself a beer afterwards. Hope this is enough since beer in Chicago is expensive. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to have Ryan on the show. Ryan has a channel. Um, Clay, ah, you changed the name. Ham Radio Dude Two. No, I don't remember what it is. It used to be Clay County Amateur Radio, uh, but I do know that he had recently changed the channel name. Ryan, if you want to let us know, and we'll get you a link. Now I got to find that tricky, tricky eight millimeter socket. Uh oh. Oh, that was right the first time. So this is a floating case as well. So that means if it is dropped, um, the impact is going to go on to the, the chassis of the radio as opposed to uh, the frame itself uh, to prevent the frame from getting damaged, essentially, as I understand. Um, oh. see here like a boss ham radio dude isn't the ft8 off just ft8 and chill well yes and no my ft8 and chill was a kind of a this ft8 and chill has been a thing for about a year now that i just really haven't been doing but uh it's just usually a chill stream one person we we actually watch the ft8 contacts talk about propagation see if there's any cool rare contacts now i have to demonetize the stream when i do that but that's not a problem um so as you can see there i have it's kind of tight, so I could loosen those if I want to, but for right now, I think I'm cool with that. You just don't want them so tight that they bind or they're difficult to move. So actually, maybe, yeah, I don't know, I'll probably loosen them up a little bit in the end. Is it an 8mm or 9mm wrench to change the timing sensor on a Ford 7.3 liter diesel? <laughs> uh, well, I guess it depends on... Uh, if it's a 75, it's an American. Uh, it's a uh, three-eighths. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, and I was just trying to see 5.9 Radio is Ryan's channel. Awesome. And um, I don't know if I have any mods in here, but if any mods could could go ahead and link 5.9 Radio. If not, I'll do it here in a minute. And I'll be sure to get you guys some mod status uh, in, in the near future here. That's funny. Uh, K8MRD, is there an open there? <laughs> Oop. Yeah, you know, I do that. So, like, I always used to point it out. Like, when I came home from Montana and Arizona, and I call this home, I was like, a lot of people say, up oh, here. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> now I catch myself doing it all the time. Attach the bottom bracket to the radio using four M4 by 16 millimeter stainless button head screws. Now, I do want to just point out that um, with the POV mount, I don't know if I tightened it down too hard or too far or what, but it kind of, it's not a dent. It's just a, just a cosmetic bl bluff, but really my rest of my radio was a little bit scratched up too. So I'm not too concerned about it. And I do have a screen cover on here because I'm ham radio dude. And admittedly I break it if it exists. You talk about sending it to uh, Josh, <laughs> <laughs> that the 61 uh the 6100 hey if they want to see if it'll break they should send it to me uh i got my sony back i know this is random but i gotta take a break i got my sony zv uh e10 back uh, <laughs> the second day it was released i had it and i dropped it and i broke it so after two months they they said hey we can't fix that so they sent me a new one or i got i got a new one excuse me <laughs> Ape says that should buff out. It only fits one way. So here we are. We're going to flip this over. I could fit this many ways. What are you talking about? But what I think what they're saying is it really does only fit one way, which is probably going to be like right there is my guess. But let me just confirm that. You see how there's like a, like a, a little bit of a groove right here. That might actually be the way. B 
That is the way. All right, cool. It's going to get to that point where I'm like all ready to put everything together and be like, yeah, you did this, this, and that wrong. What I do with these is I'm going to need to change my, no, okay. What I do with these is I'll screw one in lightly and gently, and then I'll screw the other one in on the diagonal. What's going on, Larry from Iowa? Thanks for being here. Looks legit to me. So let me see if it says uh, the, the front of the bracket is jogged a bit to accommodate the bezel of the radio. It only fits one way, and you should be able to tighten these screws firmly, but do not use excessive force. So now that I put them in on the diagonal and I've just barely snugged them, I'm going to tighten it down just a little bit more here. Uh, KM QXE says he thinks it might be upside down. It's possible. I'm looking here at the instructions and I'm just kind of, kind of peeking. And let me show you what I see real quick. Thanks for speaking up. So here's what I see. Uh, the photo kind of alluded to this. Oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong screen. This end here, you can't see my mouse anyway. The photo alluded to, uh, as you can see how it is now, there's like a little divot here and it's it's kind of facing up. And then when you look at it on the radio itself, it's kind of the same way. And you can see that line where the, the face plate meets the back of the radio and that line follows to it. So here's what I did. I kind of put it in that way. So let me know what you guys think. The case better had 10 dB with all those small screws. And like I said, I'm not opposed to, to maybe it being backwards. Uh, ah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right there. Uh, KM6QXE. Is that Don? I think you're right, actually. And the reason I think you're right... You're right, Don. Everybody, Don, Don today is the winner. Uh, and if it's not Don, KM6 QXE is the winner. I'm pretty sure it should be that way. Uh, and the reason for it is, is those little, uh, you know, for the screws here and here and for the tripod here. So thanks a lot. I'm glad you caught that. But that's easy enough. We we'll flip it, no problem. And so there are two cases you could buy. And just so you know, like I'm not trying to sell you the case or anything. But if you are interested, the the reason that maybe this would be uh, more beneficial for you is it's it's in an affordable price range of seventy dollars. And there's a couple of different ways you can get it. Uh, the price may vary a little bit depending on how you do it. But uh, you can get it with the tripod holder or without. And then also, like I mentioned earlier, the snap on screen versus the flip up cover. Man, six weeks for the Yezu 991A. What was wrong with it there, KX2U Radio? There we go. Yep, thank you guys. I appreciate that. See, it's kind of cool. We're we're building and learning together. So it says start attaching the frame to the bottom bracket using two M4 by 10 millimeter screws. Uh, do not tighten these 
screws at the time. They should only be screwed in far enough to remain in the holes. We'll tighten them later or in a later step. And we're doing okay on time, so it's good. Now, I, I guarantee you that this isn't going to take an hour to install like it is me, but I'm kind of taking my time, making sure I read the instructions, chatting with you guys, so it kind of... Ooh. Okay, that's kind of cool. On on these handles, there's there's a little lip on each side, right? Right. I'm trying to show it to you here. There we go. Right there. You see that lip right there? And so when you place this over the front of the radio, the lip actually grabs it so you can't bring it down any further. And that's where it lines up with the holes. So not bad. You blew the resistor out of the attenuator twice. So I'm just hand tightening these for right now. They said kind of leave them loose or just enough to screw in. So actually, let me bring that back a little bit there. So let's see. I'm going to take this with me. Ooh. I'm going to take this with me uh, to Area 51 next month. Um. We'll see how it how it goes. With only the frame around the radio, attach the back stays to the top of the frame. Note that they will only fit one way. Okay, I got you. I'm tracking, I'm tracking. These are the backstays, and they'll only fit one way. Wait a minute. I don't know, because it said this would only fit one way, and I found a way. <laughs> I'm kidding, but uh, let's see here. It doesn't say which ones we're going to use, but I'm assuming we're going to use... Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Ham radio, dude. Won't the inserts pull out of the way you have it now? I'm sorry, Chuck. Could you clarify for me, please? I wonder how many parts I'll have left at the end of this. <laughs> I'm not going to rush in Area 51. When I say I'm operating from Area 51, I mean like uh, just outside of Area 51. Yeah, yeah. I'm NSA. That's undoubtedly listening because I said Area 51 and inside. Uh, my intentions are not to even put a finger inside of your area. <laughs> Inserts usually come in from the back. Uh, well, everything is fitting. Let's. Um, I'm looking at some photos, and I and I think I'm correct. I'm just going to go ahead and read real quick, Chuck. Thank you for for that suggestion. I don't think so because that lip would. I'll show you real quick, Chuck. The lip that's on here, right there. If I was to bring it the other way, the lip would get stuck right here, and then it wouldn't fit over. So I am led to believe that I'm correct. Although I've also known to listen to Chuck in the past, because if I don't listen to him now, <laughs> undoubtedly I'll listen to him after I do it wrong. <laughs> Uh, KX2 U radio. The case is 3D printed in PLA plus and um, ham gear 3D. I don't think I included a link, but I will. Um, so it weighs in at a half of a pound and it's 50% infill. All right. Note that 
They only fit one way with the hook hanging down over the back of the radio. Just like that. Boom. Okay, this is the part where I actually have to read a little bit more here. Let me take a break. Mike says he doesn't get a VHF, UHF. His alliance lies in HF, and I agree, Mike. Tighten the screw, screws firmly. Make sure that the body of the backstay lines up with the top of the frame. Yeah, I agree, KX2. You that was kind of one of my concerns was uh, PLA and Mike, Mike, uh, the creator of this this case. He he explained, you know, PLA plus, excuse me, PLA plus is uh, usually able to withstand up to 140 degrees and at 50 percent infill. I figured I'd give it a shot. Y'all are going to laugh at me if I tell you I have like four extra parts. <laughs> Five. P, T, G, A, B, S, those are really difficult to print with depending. I mean, you really got to dial those settings in. I think that's why a lot of people like PLA. PLA seems to be more, what's the word, uh, forgiving. So, guys, here it is. Now, let me see if I can bring it up here. Boom. Now, I really do like this because, I mean, to protect your screen while it's in transit or whatever, that's kind of not a bad idea. I just wanted to show you that I could beat things. Now, you guys are thinking, man, I'm crazy. <laughs> but I kind of wanted to beat it to see. And I'll, I'm going to test this out fully here in the future. Um, I do have a tripod here. I should have had Mike here to guide me some. Yeah, yeah, I could have. I, I should have thought of that. I, you know what? Honestly, I didn't know what I was going to stream until this morning. So, uh, But there you go. Boom. You know? Boom. So that's that. Now, um, I will say about the POV case, okay? I'm holding it, no problem. Blah, 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 blah. I'm pretty brave, I know. I'm brave. I'm testing things. That's what I do. So, uh, but anyway, um, if you could see it here on the screen, it does have that angle too. So there's a 14 degree angle. So you could look at your radio. Now, I have an idea. One of the things I don't like about the IC705 is uh, none of these light up. And surprisingly, you know, I was on Chuck's uh, back porch and I'm doing radio and I can't find any of the buttons. So I'm using like my phone flashlight. It would be kind of cool to put in a little LED strip here, provided it doesn't provide interference as well. Maybe just like a little small battery powered LED strip or a light right here. Because then when you have it like this and you bring it down, the light will shine from down here onto to the radio and help you kind of like be able to see all the buttons and everywhere you got to go. <laughs> Joe Brett says, you're giving me, anxiety. I can't break it, Joe. What are you talking about? But uh, that's kind of what I do on YouTube. by test things until I break them. I do need to loosen that a little bit, as you can see. So let me just go ahead and slightly loosen it because there is a little bit too much grab. And they said, hey, if there's too much grab, loosen it up a little bit, right? Oh yeah, that's a good point there, unlucky ham. The cover could also also act as a sunshade for that screen. So I know it's not related to this case, but uh, I did. I don't want to give away too much because I don't know how much he wants me to give away. But I did speak to one of the big dogs over there at POV. And they're coming out with a couple of cool accessories for for the their cage. 
Um, but I don't want to really ruin what I'm just having a hard time with my left hand here. There we go. All right. So anybody have any questions? Does that case make the 705 waterproof now? <laughs> you know how to test that? Uh, yeah, Jim, I don't know that it actually is going to make it waterproof per se. Um, I don't want to be the guy to find out though. I do like my 705. Oh, it's... There we go. Sorry, that took so long. There we go. I think that's better, right? Yeah, that's cool. Anyway, guys, that's it. So we got about 15 minutes. I'm not going to cut this, this stream short or anything. Is there anything y'all want to see? Show when it snowed in the back of the truck. <laughs> oh, so Chuck's referring to Chuck printed. Well, I guess it's another thing we could look at. Um, he has a fair point. Um, well, look at me thinking things out. Let me Google something real quick. And, and what Chuck is referring to is Chuck and I inevitably were having a blast in California where he told me to bring shorts. So I brought shorts and we were stuck in a snowstorm in the cold and I was wearing shorts. But regardless, that's not the point. We had some wire winders that Chuck printed with PLA and probably only at 20% infill. When we got up there, uh, they were breaking in half because of the cold and it was only about 37 degrees. So let me just take a look at that real quick. After the part is fully printed, thermal stress equalizes and becomes a non-issue. Colder temperatures will theoretically put greater stress on the inner layer bonding, but I very much doubt it will be able to break the part. In short, you won't encounter any warping and any chance of cracking is very low. I don't know, Chuck. I'm going to say it was user error. Uh, but, you know, I will test this out fully and, and let you guys know for sure. I got my call sign on it, so I can't give it away. Unless anybody else has that call sign, I don't know. All right, what else we got going on in the chat here? So does that make the 705 shock proof? Well, it's a free floating case. So the, uh, uh, let's see, I don't, it's a good question. I wouldn't call anything shock proof, but uh, it does help provide protection to the front of the case. And just make sure it turns on still. You know. There's some guy right now on a certain website that I, I promise never to name. Uh, and he's probably like, man, he treats his radios like garbage. You got to test them. Show us the extra parts. That's right. I got some extra parts. <laughs> I got this one and this one and this one, and this one and this one. But it's not a project unless you have extra parts. I'm pretty sure those are just extra parts in case. And if I miss something, I'll, I'll be sure to let you guys know in the next live stream. <laughs> I didn't miss anything. I actually read the directions today, guys. Does it come in other colors? That's a great question, Mike. Um, it does. Let me tell you the colors real quick. Let me pull up that page if you guys give me just another second here. Bum, ba -bum, bum, bum. We need like hold music. Like, thank you for holding. Ham Radio Dude will be back in a moment. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Well, that's as good as it's going to get for right now. Let me take me out of it for a second. There you go. That'll be a little bit better, right? So basically, if we page down here, they talk about the sturdy frame protects the front panel of the IC705. The base tilt is 14 degrees. Um, 
and then here, where does it say about colors? There is somewhere about colors down here. Uh, so the standard color for the frame is black as shown in the photos. And I want it black. Um, Mike had asked me what I wanted. Sorry, that's a little bit off there. And uh, you can get olive green, orange, red, or yellow. So, you know, I'm a fan of it. Now, actually, that's a good point. Let me take this off of the screen real quick. Put me back on. Now I'm getting the hang of live streaming. Um, it doesn't interfere with where, you know, your antenna is going to go or where your ground is going to go, where your microphone is going to go. Um, you know, you probably are wondering where my little plastic cover is for this. And I didn't get one with the radio. Um, <laughs> fair enough. But it doesn't interfere with anything there. So. Uh, I would like to see it in different forms of camo. Now, I do think they make a PLA, not a PLA plus that's camo colored, uh, but you could, I think it's Inland who makes it. Only four likes. Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, what? I don't need your likes. I don't care. Please like me. Anyway, that's what we got going on here. So we have about uh, nine minutes until Ham Radio, uh, Ham Nation, excuse me, on Ham Radio Crash Course starts. Uh, let's see here. Anybody else have any questions in the chat? Anybody have any news? Any uh, any announcements? Uh, let Meg's baby sit. Oh yeah, Meg's. Yeah, that's right. This is Meg seven hundred five. Joe Bread is correct. It's Meg seven hundred five. That's why I got the sixty one hundred. Uh, Smoking Ape wants to see the milk crate challenge. I'll tell you what, Ape. I will fly you out to Illinois. I will fly you out to Illinois. I will set up the milk crates for you, and I'll give you the radio to operate on there. If you do the milk crate challenge, you could even keep the radio. You guys heard that on the stream first. And Todd's got a point. You could use camel gorilla tape. Oh, some guy was trolling over at the HRCC Facebook page. That's not good. FEP Labs Radio says, hey, maybe some lithium grease on the hinge. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Um, there's also, I don't remember what it's called, but it's like a powder we used to use on our handcuff hinges. And uh, instead of it being greasy, it, it it basically was just a powder that goes in there. It might be like the same, like maybe like a lead or some something similar to that. It's not lead. What is the milk crate challenge? Living in X wants to know. Well, back over the summer on the TikTok. Uh, there was, I guess, these kids who got this genius idea to build these melt crates in the shape of a pyramid. And I don't remember if they were just climbing them and standing on top and trying to balance on them because it's apparently really hard to balance on a bunch of milk crates. Uh, but they were all falling and breaking their necks. And, you know, it was like the the Tide Pod Challenge, right? It was it was the Tide Pod Challenge of 2021. Uh, everybody sit back and let me tell you the story of the Great Tide Pod Challenge of 2019. Uh, no. <laughs> But uh, basically, you know, there were a bunch of kids getting hurt and they had to go on the news. People had to go on the news and say, like, don't climb on milk crates. So Ape wants me to do the milk crate challenge, which I can't do. Otherwise, I totally would because I have a bad back. But uh, I, I challenge you. I challenge you, Smoking Ape. And if you guys want to see Smoking Ape do it, slap that like button. Let's see. Graphite. There you go. Thank you, Jim. Graphite conducts by bad idea around the radio. Yeah, genius. Genius. Uh, you know, I didn't consider that. That's cool. Um, of course, there is one other thing we have to do. Give me just a moment here. We need to see if this fits in my case still. so weird like listening to dead air when i'm not talking yeah, it's tight the nice thing the nice thing about the camera case that i use 
is I could adjust the sections of the camera case. So like right now, I would say it doesn't fit. I'm gonna kind of hold it. Uh, uh, there we go. It doesn't fit because that bottom piece is kind of digging in, but I could actually adjust that down and it would fit okay. Anyway, that's that. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go use the heck out of it. So thanks, Mike, over there at uh, HamGear3D.com. Let me uh, post a link for y'all if I haven't already. And if you guys want to see anything next week, maybe we should start talking about it now. Ice bucket challenge, but donate to the League Youth Ham Learning Center. So, uh, I keep calling you Don, and if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll get it right next time. Um, I would be more than happy to do an ice, bu uh, ice bucket challenge uh, and donate to the League Young uh, Ham Learning stuff. Any kind of young ham organization, I'll do an ice bucket challenge and raise funds through the chat uh, to donate back to them. I have no problem doing that. And if you guys want to see that, let me know. I wonder if you could add a trailer stand for operating in the field. A taller stand, my bad. Yeah, you can. I don't see why not. I could use a tripod. Um, in fact, give me one moment. Jeff wants to know what happened to the two meter antenna challenge. And uh, the only person who made a video was uh, anime. Now I, I have one, I have one ready to go, but uh, I'll release it at some point. Um, but yeah, no, there just wasn't as much interest as the Morse code challenge. So I guess, uh, I guess that one fell flat. I like doing the ham radio dude challenges. Maybe that should be a whole challenge in itself is the ice bucket challenge where after I do the ice bucket challenge, I call out another YouTuber to do it. What do you guys think about that? Ham radio dude's always the guy, the guy with the, the ideas. I'll tell you. Todd, I think you're talking about like this. Am I making anybody nervous yet? So, yeah, you could put it on a taller stand. Uh, Mike supports that idea. So I think this might be something we start to do. Maybe we can get the uh, the coffee and ham radio guys versus the ham radio clubhouse guys to see who could do the craziest ice bucket challenge and raise the most amount of money for youth on the air any kind of youth organization. But I think first and foremost, we need to figure out what youth organization we want to support. Uh, how many, how about any projects using magnet wire? KX2U radio. How about we build, uh, we build some sort of un, -un next week. Does that sound like a good idea? Um, that one will be undoubtedly one you won't want to miss because it's, if I stumbled a little bit with this case and I had a good time building the case and again, thank you, Mike, that was awesome. Uh, uh, for sure. Next week, if I'm building something with magnet wire, it'll, <laughs> it'll be a, uh, it'll be a doozy. So you guys will want to check that out. I like that idea. Did you say meow? Right. Meow. Yeah. I like I like the idea of uh, trying to give back. And in fact, Mike Kate MRD, I got to give him a shout out. Uh, he was in Huntsville and I think he brought, I don't think he brought a, uh, a bunch of radios. I think uh, a bunch of radios that he acquired all over the years and he donated them to Steve Goodgame, who at that time was running the pad one. So, you know, he, he just went down there and was like, check out all these radios, give them to the kids, you know? So I, I appreciate that back when good game was around, I would donate uh, radios. Uh, I sold him the G90 uh, at cost that I got it. So if you guys remember, I got it a really good deal. I gave, I sold it to him for that cost so he could give it or pass it forward or move it, play it forward. Um, and I think most of those funds were raised through the other chats here, uh, sending bow fangs. And uh, I just think it's a, it's a really critical thing to, to try to get youth involved in radio, especially because there's some youth who probably can't afford to get involved, who would love to get involved. So yeah, if we could do it, I'll, I'm all for it. How about some, uh any arduino stuff 
we could do Arduino stuff if if I'm reading that correctly. And if I'm not, I'm sorry. Uh, I was thinking about 49 to 1. We could do a 49 to 1 on un, and no problem. I'll tell you what, we'll build the un, un. We'll um we'll we'll test it to make sure it works or that it's actually correctly done. And uh, then we'll shoot the breeze the rest of the stream. So it's eight o'clock, guys. I'm sorry, I don't want to cut it short, but it is Ham Nation time. You guys go see Ham Nation. It's on now on Ham Radio Crash Course's uh, site. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you all. Until next week, 73.